Hi ladies. So I have a video for you today and I have my notes. So this one's a good one. I'm going to try and make it quick, but it's so important. You need to watch the whole video because these are, these are 12 things that every woman needs to know and we need to know them very well because if not, we're going to end up suckers. Okay. So these are sub, sometimes subconscious, sometimes conscious neurologically driven behaviors by men that should make you run the other way not walk ladies run run the other way so let's get right into it so number one are these subtle put you down kind of guys and they do it in a backward kind of way these are your future emotional abusive men and they don't start that way they start with jokes and little comments and they start with little innuendos and things such as to say oh like you dressed up for me for once you look really nice oh you you dressed up for me for once that's nice to see very subtle slapping face very subtle insult and degrading to your physical appearance and to how you normally dress this is a baby step to emotionally abusive behavior okay so sometimes comparing you to others is is another example of this they'll compare you to other people they'll say things like oh this meal is really great you did such a great job cooking it you should you should talk to this person or I have this friend and she or his girlfriend is a fabulous cook she could teach you how to cook so many great things it sounds on the surface like it's just, you know, some nice advice, but it is not some nice advice. It's saying this is great, but there's better out there and you can learn from her. So these are subtle, it's comparing you to other people, it's bringing you down, and it's, it's questioning your, it's making you question your competence. And you need to be careful and mindful of these little indicators in men's behavior because these are indicators of future behaviors that only grow. People's personalities only grow stronger and develop as we get older. We learn things, we become more more confident, we become more outgoing, and we're more confident and overt in our behaviors. So if the behaviors are subtle and cute and funny and maybe unintentional, maybe not even aware or conscious behaviors, doesn't change the fact of what they are. They are what they are. Okay, the second time is the second, sorry, the second ones are the guys who can't plan a proper date. Okay, so they'll do things like, oh, maybe we can do something next week or um, let's see what's happening on the weekend. Maybe we can hook up on the weekend and do something on the weekend. If you hear the word hook up, see you later. Even if it's a casual gesture, most men, if they really like you, they're so careful about what they say because they're nervous because they really like you. They're not going to use phrases like that. The men I know that are friends that are, if they really like a girl, they tell me they never bring up sex. They never refer to sexual things. They never use sexual innuendos or comments because they don't want to scare girls away and intimidate them. They're very conscious of it because they really like the girl. So if a guy really likes you, that's not going to happen. So he's taking you for granted and he's not valuing you if he's using that language. But the second part of that is is if they can't say okay do you have plans on Tuesday let's do something on Tuesday let's do dinner or let's go out for lunch on the weekend how about Saturday is Saturday good for you this means if they're leaving it open like maybe on the weekend we'll do something or maybe next week we can meet up that's a guy that can't commit he can't make plans and can't commit and the other thing is sometimes there's there's a few indicators of this they're the guy that are gonna wait and see if something better comes up something better comes along and you're the backup plan so they're just keeping your their options open with you and you're not an option you're not a backup plan so if you hear that sort of behavior and that sort of date planning then that's not a date you need to be on you're too good for that so then there's the drink guys let's go for a drink let's go for a drink so there's two things to this. Sometimes guys will want to go for a drink because it's an easy way to spend a little bit of money, a short amount of time. If they don't like you, they're out of there. And if they like you, then they can invest. But there's also a large number of men and men I've met who I know because I've worked in a lot of male dominant environments 
that have told me that they'll take girls out for drinks because the chances of them ending up in bed are like way up there, way up there if they can have a have an evening of drinks with a girl. And I shit you not, I have been told this by men. And these are professional, educated, intelligent men and they're very intelligent and manipulative in it and they'll say let's go for drinks and I'm sorry for the innocent cases of guys that really just want to have a quick drink, see if they like you, feel it out. They can do that on the phone or on FaceTime or on WhatsApp. You don't need to meet for drinks and take the chance and there's worse things that can happen with your drinks too and which we're all aware of but the the common problem is that we don't expect a guy to be planning to get us drunk and take us to bed. We're not teenagers, we're grown women. But guys do this, and it's grown ass men that do these things too. So don't be fooled. Guys who want to immediate anything and say, say like, we're gonna go out to this place, they want like, they want you to accommodate everything, sorry. They like, we're gonna go to this place and I have plans and you're gonna come out to me to the other side of the ta of the other side of the city or come here I'm taking you to dinner at this restaurant that's not open for accommodation that's not accommodating let's meet halfway and especially in the beginning there should be some really serious accommodating going on in, in a dating situation and it should be something that works for both of you and if they don't say something like what works for you do you want to meet halfway or I'll come pick you up would be a really respectful polite masculine thing to say or maybe they can't pick you up or you know just to be open to suggestions open to accommodating you and your needs as well not to be dictating what the date's going to be and a lot of men see that as masculinity being dictative and take being strong in that but that can turn into an dominating domineering controlling personality in the future and that's an indicator of someone who has it in them to be very dominating and controlling and that's not something you need in your life in the future you don't need to be controlled you need somebody to support you and accommodate you and you need to equally be supportive and accommodating of their needs as well it, it's a two-way street so be mindful of that watch out for those guys and if they won't go halfway for a date on a location don't go on that date. That's not worth it. So here's the other one. The insecure guys, they will shrink you. They will do intentionally shrink you and bring you down with their comments, with their behaviors, with their responses, with their micro with their expressions, their micro expressions, their body language, their everything in their communication. They will do whatever they can to shrink you down to make themselves feel bigger and feel more masculine and feel more manly because they're so insecure with their masculinity and with themselves and their accomplishments. Um, you need somebody who is going to support your path to growth in life, to growing, to becoming the best you can be, to your accomplishments, to your advancements, to everything you do to improve yourself. You want someone that's encouraging to that and supportive of that, not someone who's gonna try and keep you low so they can still feel bigger and bigger and bigger because they need that because they're so insecure with themselves. They, they will put you down in subtle ways and be mindful, be watchful for these subtle put downs because that is a big red flag. Like that is flaming fucking red to run the other way because that is a lifetime of behavior that's going to just go go downhill it, it just it's a slippery slope so the next one is all the guys who talk badly about their exes and i know a lot of women know about this i hope you do because first of all there's points you don't think of though the normal point is that the normal point is that people who talk badly about their exes it's just d distasteful it's unintelligent and it's not classy. You don't talk badly about one woman to another woman. That's a really poor form and that's really poor, poor behavior, okay? But the second is, is that first of all, they love them at some point or they enjoyed their company at some point, so they're not all bad. And they just hate them now and they're such terrible people now because they don't want them back or they're not with them and it didn't work out. But they weren't always that bad or they would never have been with them in the first place unless they have no standards and no values for themselves. In which case you don't want them anyway. But the other point is, is that if they, if they are 
a good and decent person, they're not going to talk garbage about anybody like that. And mo and they're and they're most likely hateful. The women that they're talking about, sorry, the women, the exes that they're talking about are most likely hateful and they weren't in the beginning. That's why they like them. They became hateful because of the way they were treated in that relationship. So maybe they turned out to be a hateful bitch and maybe that's the case, but maybe they were made that way because they didn't respond well and didn't cope well with the abuse or with the the put downs or the subtle insults or the degrading behaviors, the degrading comments. Maybe they didn't respond well to being treated poorly by this gentleman. And that's why they turned out to be such a terrible, terrible bitch when they were good enough to be with in the first place. Because if they were good enough to be with in the first place and now they're so awful, you gotta think. You gotta use your brilliant mind and think, what happened between good enough for me and girlfriend or wife and now they're a filthy piece of garbage? What went wrong there? Because it's never one person's fault, it takes two, right? So that's a huge one. The guys who give you mis mixed signals. So like he's, he's like texting you one day and then the next day he's not responding to your texts, right? Or it's on and off, on and off. Now this is, first of all, this is a guy that can't commit. He doesn't know how to commit. And when, you, when a man wants something, they take it. That's a masculine man. A man wants something, he will take it, he will go for it, and he will take it and grab it. And he'll do everything he can to get it. And um, if a man is not consistently pursuing you, he's not that into you. And I swear to you, every woman needs to watch once a year that movie, he's not that into you. Because it reminds you of what that looks like and what that feels like when a guy isn't that into you. And it reminds us not to chase because we know really quick, instantly, if they're into us or not, very simply. And the other thing, the other thing is when they do that, there's more to this and I'm not gonna get deeply into it, but there is a, 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 a type of sociopathic behavior where, and it's a narcissistic behavior, where men will control you and control your emotions and cause dependence by pulling you in, pushing you away pulling you in, pushing you away. And then what it does is it you get your dopamine rush when they pull you in and then they push you away and your brain craves that dopamine rush. So you're constantly there on your mind. So you start chasing and chasing and chasing and they get a thrill out of this. They get a rise and it's a pathological neurological function and they get a rise out of it. And it makes you dependent on them because you need that dopamine hit because our brains become very dependent on that elevated level of dopamine to function and without it we feel tired we feel sick we feel like we can't think clearly we get foggy in the brain and men will do this to us intentionally whether they know it or not and it is a narcissistic and a sociopathic trait and it goes far into psychology and i'm not going to go into that but if you are experiencing these behaviors run ladies on all fours run Run like like a crazy raccoon. Run. So mama's boys, they got to go. Mama's boys, you will never be able to compare. They want to go from one mother to another. And you don't need to be somebody's mother. You need an equal. You need a partner. You need someone who will give you what you're able to give them, not someone who is dependent on you. And the other worrisome factor is, is men who hate their her mothers. Men who hate their mothers have a hatred for women. And it's a deep suited that this is deep, deep seated. This is another psychological deep dive we could do. And it's another whole video again, but men who hate their mothers, generally there's a reason. And generally it's a really emotionally toxic, abusive reason. If they hate their mother, it takes a lot to hate your mother for a man. And if they do, they will have a hate for women and they will take that out on you whether they know it or not, and it can't go away without lots of therapy. And these aren't men that are going to be open to therapy because they don't think there's anything wrong with them. They think there's something wrong with women and with their mother. So men who are mama's boys, who their mother can do no wrong, and they will choose their mother's side over you instead of being politically correct or supporting their partner and being supportive and respectful and loving of their mother and respectful of their opinion, but, but will always, 
always defend their wife or their partner as well and be respectful of yours as well, these men will actually put you down and insult you to make their mother happy. And the ones who hate their mothers, run on all fours. Again, the man who never admits when he's wrong. So you need a man that knows himself. He knows his values. He knows his, he knows, you know that he has decent values, first of all. And he knows them, he's aware of them, and he acts within them. And he knows when he has gone against his values and he's sorry for it and he reflects on it and he takes accountability and he can say he's sorry. If you run into a man who never admits that he's been, done something wrong and that he's been wrong and what he should have done or what he would do differently, run away because you expect that of yourself and you should. You should know when you're wrong and you've made a mistake and be big enough to say, you know what? I thought about what I said last night and I shouldn't have said that. It came across wrong or... I said something I shouldn't have and I'm really sorry and there's no excuse for it. I was not handling my emotions well, I wasn't handling my feelings well and I took it out on you inappropriately and that was wrong of me. And that's the proper response. A man that can't do that is a man that can't be a partner, okay? So don't forget it. Guys that talk love really fast but they don't act like it. So. They leave you waiting for their text messages for days, okay? They, they love you when they were with you. They're like, I love you so much. I love you. I can't believe I met you. You're perfect. You're the perfect girl. I'm so, like, we're, we're connected right from the start. But then you'll text them and you'll hear back five hours later or you'll hear back the next day. Or they won't give you details about plans you've made. You'll be waiting. You're all dressed up, ready to go, and you're waiting on the details. Like, are you going to be here soon? What time are you coming? Where are we going? What's going on? Because they don't care about you. They care about themselves. And it's all about them, them, them. It's not about your needs and what what's important to you and what your feelings are and what you need to move forward. It's about them and that's it. Last minute plans. These guys are full of shit. They don't love you. Guys who love you, they're just wasting your time. Those guys are the last minute plans guys. The guys that leave you waiting on texts, on details, on plans. They are waiting for something better to come up and that's what they're wait that's what you're waiting on to see if something better comes up for them in their life but something better for them to do or a, a better date for them someone they'd rather be with or go out on a date with than be with you and that's what you're truly waiting on not for them to read a message not that's not what you're waiting for no matter what they say and if they tell you that they're full of shit and they if they really loved you there is nothing better than you. They would respond to you instantly. They're waiting for your text. They're hoping you're gonna text them, okay? That, that's how that works. And here we are. We are down to the last one here. So guys who fall in love fast. So here's the deal with it. So psychologically, men fall in love slowly but they fall out of love even slower. They have a very hard time letting go, okay? Women, psychologically and biologically, we're talking, like hormonally and chemically, we'll have those feelings faster and quicker than men, more quickly. We'll experience feelings of love and attachment quicker than men will. But we are also much quicker to detach and be able to move on. The men who fall in love very, very quickly will also fall out of love overnight just as quickly. So watch out for that because the floor will fall out from under you just when you think everything's fine. So yeah, normal men, they take forever to get over a breakup. It takes them a long time to heal. And that is neurologically normal and chemically and hormonally normal for women, not, or, sorry, for men to be, for, for, them to, for them to not be able to get over something quickly. When they are in too quick, that means they'll be out too quick. And that is not chemically, hormonally, emotionally normal for a man's behavior. That means they're in their feminine. They're not in their masculine. They're more in their feminine than masculine. And it, the reverse goes the other way for women too. Women, expect yourself to, ha to develop feelings and attachments quickly. But also know that even when a breakup happens, you are gonna be okay. Because it feels like the very worst thing in the world for the first little while. And you don't know how you're going to get out of it. You don't know how you're going to go to work. You don't know how you're going to function. Like you feel like you can't breathe without them. You don't know what to do. But then instantly, you don't even know why. Chemically, 
something changes those hormones change those brain chemicals change and overnight you're over it and once you're over it it's gone it's done it won't come back you're gonna be okay but ladies if you see these signs in men nine times out of ten these are early warning signs things are only going to get worse they're warning signs of much worse much more abusive much more self-deprecating or to to you more deprecating and insulting behavior and it's going to hurt you in the long run and cause you to shrink down and become less instead of to grow into the amazing, brilliant, beautiful woman that you are and that you're on the path to becoming, which you always will be because our whole life we're on a constant path of growing and becoming better and better and we come, become more confident, more intelligent, more beautiful with age and experience and knowledge and all of these things. But these men that show these traits don't want that they want to keep us down so girls i'm going to keep it to, i'm going to wrap it up here i don't want to keep you all night but don't forget these write them down save this video share this video go back and watch it again if you don't want to watch it all at once or if you have watched it save it watch it again remind yourself and watch that movie watch that movie once a year he's just not that into you best movie ever made for women i, I tell every young girl to watch it Everybody needs to watch that movie because it reminds you of what it looks like when a man is really into you and when you're wasting your time. And that's all I have to say. I hope everybody learned from this. I hope you valued it and it teaches you a little something and it's helpful in your lives and in your relationships and in scouting new relationships and feeling them out and red flags to look for. If you like my channel, guys, please give me a subscription. Give me a like, send me comments. I read them all, I respond, and I'm really grateful for everybody who does. And I'm grateful for everybody who tunes in and watches and returns. So have a lovely evening and you will see me soon. Take care.